Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I have my microphone plugged in this morning. I was so I am so sorry that I did not notice it was not plugged in yesterday when I made those two last videos. That is so frustrating. You would think that by now I would remember. Check your microphone. Make sure it's set right. Make sure the settings are right. Right? All right, I'll make sure it's set right. I had to unplug it to plug in my camera to um, upload some pictures. And then something glitched and that didn't work right. I tell you, it's... I just know it's the dirtbags, devils. Notific let's see, sound. If you click on system sound. Speakers, high definition. Aha, see? Oh, that's output. Gonna say no USB lavalier microphone. That's right. See, it was probably set to that and it wasn't plugged in, so y'all didn't hear it. unless you have really good hearing or leaned right in. So I really apologize for that. But I want to share this song with you this morning. I can't play the whole thing. I never heard this before, and it's really a fun song to hear. So I'm going to play a little bit of it under the Fair Use Act for the purposes of entertainment and discussion. If you wish to leave a comment and tell me what you think about it. All right. It goes fast, so listen quick. Okay, I'll end it there. That shouldn't get me into trouble, right? Surely not. The devil's in the phone booth dialing 911. The church is on her knees loading her spiritual gun. <laughs> That's uh, my sister in Christ, Crystal, from Nevada, I believe was her state, by, right by California. She lives near a desert. She sent that. She likes to send me songs to help lift me up, keep me singing. Some of them I never, like this one, I never heard of it before. And um, I just thought this was a great little song. I had to share it. And y'all might want to go to it. You click on the link in the description box. Go to this. You can save it to your favorite music if you like it. I want to learn it so you can go around singing. The devil's in the phone booth out of the 911. <laughs> However it went, I got to learn it myself because I like this one. All right, with that, I'm going to say God bless each and every one of you. And, uh, oh my goodness. I, you know, when I was praying last night, I plead the blood of Jesus over all of the Christians I know, and all the saints in the world. There's three groups, and all my subscribers is one group. All of Grafted in Team Jesus and anyone associated with that ministry is one group, and all the saints in the world is another group. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every person in that group and say, and those loved ones they're praying for, if they're not marked. And I was asking the Lord, I, I caught myself stopped, and I said, Lord, are my prayers a waste of time? Are you pleading the blood? Are you putting your precious blood all over these people? Their homes, their pets, their other animals they're raising, their vehicles, all their belongings. Are you putting the hedges of protection around their homes? I pray so. And Lord, I do pray, let your will be done, not mine. So I will say that for those whom you will, I'm going to continue to say this. And I pray in the Spirit some before and during and after, you know, other things that I say. And hope that your 
particular requests, the Holy Spirit knows. You don't even have to put in comments. And He knows what you need. Father, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit all know what you need. And I hope that when I pray in the Spirit, I'm praying for those needs that you don't even mention. So, I just wanted to tell you that. I hope that when I put that hedge, those hedges of protection around your property, whatever you're living in, however big or however small, however crowded, however lonely, that the Lord hears my prayers because some people don't know to pray it for themselves. But I think he wants you to, to plead the blood of Jesus over your home. I ask him to seal off every crack, crevice, hole, or opening in the walls, in the roof, and cover everything attached to your dwelling place and mine. And uh, seal off the foundation or cover the underside of the dwelling place if it's off the ground, like a mobile home, or if you're living in a car or an RV. So, I hope you're doing your spiritual warfare. I pray that you're putting on, or what I do is I plead the blood of Jesus over my helmet of salvation, my breastplate of righteousness, my belt of truth, and my shoes of peace. And then I take up my shield of faith. I plead the blood of Jesus over my shield of faith so I can extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. I don't ever take it off. So I don't see the need of putting it on every night or every morning. I just plead the blood of Jesus over it every night. And I take up my sword, which is the very word of God. And I say, quick to divide lies from the truth, like bone from arrow. Okay, there's something else I needed to tell you. I just hit 717 when I thought that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 717 is Harpazzo. Rapture. Snatching away. When that happens, bride. Or the second rapture when it happens to the rest of you. The wheat harvest is the second one. The barley harvest is the first one. When you feel yourself lifting off, do not look back. Two people have gotten from the Lord. At the moment you feel yourself leaving, do not look back. Don't look to see if your husband's coming or your kids or your pets. The Lord has told me that at the right time, at just the right time, an angel will come for your pet. I suppose it will be several angels if you have several pets. Now, those of you raising a few cows, a few sheep, some goats, will they go? I don't know why not. Are they pets? He said to me, you're pets. And he will take care of the rest, I'm sure. If they don't go, he'll take care of them. They're yours, aren't they? At any rate, the point is, no matter what you have or who in your life, you don't look back to see if they're right behind you. Do not look back. Our eyes are on Jesus, and they are to stay on Jesus, no matter what. And I say this because some of you might have little children. I have an adorable little dog. I want to know he's going, but I'm not. I know what Jesus told me. I'm not going to look back to see if he's right behind me because I know an angel's going to go for him. What about your children? You need to have it in your head. Don't look back. God has them. Okay? I needed to say that. And um, this was shared on Grafted in Team Jesus, so I don't have a link. I don't have it written down. But it makes perfect sense because the Bible says, remember Lot's wife. Let's look that up. Let's look that up. Let's let that be our proof right there. Let me go. Um, see, I need to... Uh, let's go right here. 
remember Lot's wife. I'm thinking there's a New Testament scripture to that. Faith is for the future. BYU speeches. What does it mean to remember Lot's wife in Luke 17.32? There we go. Let's go to Blue Letter Bible. Luke 17.32. Luke 17.32. Luke 17.32. I forget stuff so quickly. It's very frustrating, so I have to repeat it. Luke 17.32. I'm going to NASB 95. All right. He said, let's back up a little. And just as it, I'm going to start with verse 26. And just as it happened in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying. So they're not starving. They're not thirsty. They're not out of work yet. Until the day that Noah entered the ark, they were oh wait a minute, they were marrying, they were being given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same as happened in the days of Lot. They were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, they were selling. They were planting. They were building. But on the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just the same on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. It has to mean the day the bride is taken out. Moving on, verse 31. On that day, the one who is on the housetop and whose goods are in the house must not go down to take them out. And likewise, the one who is in the field must not turn back. Some simultaneous things are going to be occurring. Or I should say, many things are going to be occurring at the same time. Simultaneously, in other words. Destruction, World War Three, probably. We leave, babies are going, etc. Those who aren't are not to go in their houses and take stuff. They need to run. God will tell you. If you're communing with him, he will say, Do not go back home. Get in your car and head south. Head north. Head west. Whatever. Depending on where you are. Um, don't. Don't. The one who is in the field must not turn back. Then he says, remember Lot's wife. Okay. Lot was being led out. Lot and his wife and his two daughters. They were being snatched away from harm's way. And Lot's wife chose to turn around and look back. Guess she really liked her life back there more than she wanted the safety she was going to. She just had to see for herself what was happening. Her curiosity killed her, didn't it? Whoever seeks to keep his life and those things in it will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. Let your life go. Don't look back. Don't seek to preserve it or know what's going on with it. Know that you're heading towards Jesus and safety. I tell you on that night there will be two in one bed. One will be taken and the other will be left. See? Your spouse, don't look back to see if they're coming. Don't look back as if to say, goodbye, honey. You get the point. There will be two women grinding at the same place. 
One will be taken and the other will be left. They may be best friends. And you're heading up. You going to turn around and tell her goodbye? Have you not been talking to her? Trying to tell her the rapture's going to happen soon? Sister, I wish you'd get ready. Repent of your sins. Believe with me. And they go, ah, oh, we got plenty of time left. You know I love the Lord. You know I'm ready, but I just don't believe it's now. There's a reason they think that way. They love the world. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other will be left. And answering, they said to him, Where, Lord? And he said to them, Where the body is, there also the vultures will be gathered. This vulture should be eagles. And it's it, the footnote says, or eagles. Where the body is, that's Jesus. And the body of Christ going up to him. All the eagles are going to be gathered up there outside of this dimension, outside of time, outside of this life. We will be gathered, this remnant body. If you turn around to see if that one's coming or to say goodbye, I wonder they're, they're, what these pe two people I know have gotten the Lord didn't get a, or else will they just fall back down and end up in the Great Tribulation with them? Probably. That's what I think. And they might be high enough up that when they drop down, they die. I think they'd still go to heaven, but they won't be part of the Bride of Christ and they won't be coming back to help harvest the wheat. I don't know. I can't answer that. Because the word of God is clear. He's telling you there will be two here, and two there, and two here, and two there. One will be taken, one will be left. Just like with Lot and his wife. They were snatched out of harm's way, and she looked back. And God turned her into a pillar of salt. Well, I had no idea this was going to turn into a little sermon or Bible teaching, whatever you want to call it. And this is again Luke 17. I'll put these scriptures in the description box. And the link to this song, The Devil's in the Phone Booth, dialing 911. Will you say prayers on a daily basis that would put him in a phone booth? I hope so. All right, let me, uh-oh, uh that completely shut down. Okay, good, they're all restored. I got to pull this down. How do I do it to get there? Oh, how, how strange. All right, <laughs> with that, I'm going to say bye for now, brothers and sisters. I will keep you in my prayers. I will continue. I told Jesus, I'm going to continue to say these prayers, whether you actually do them for me or not. I'm going to believe that you do. So I will keep you, keep on praying for y'all and those needs I know of. I mentioned the ones I know of a name, but I don't know the need. I pray in the Spirit. And the Spirit covers them all. Okay, bye for now. I'll talk to you later.